morning and welcome to the First United Methodist Church because you are at church from your home and you are in my office <laughs> at my home for right now. And you will get to travel throughout a few people's homes as we worship together. You may be wondering why you're seeing my face instead of Pastor Ryan. Well, as the youth director at the First United Methodist Church and a few other titles, that just mean I work with our teens and our kids, I'm happy to do it. They're a lot of fun. It is Youth Sunday. And as a church as a whole, we value everyone. And we've always encouraged our young people to be a part of that because there is no age where you are suddenly the church. It's, uh, it's from birth. So all are able to have God work through them. And our young people, our teens, have created a lot of content today. And they have helped um, do so much. Normally, Youth Sunday is a lot of work because you have so many people to coordinate and it's a good a lot of work. This is even more work because we have to socially distance. And so, there's a lot of recorded content from people's homes, all from people's homes or outside. And that's really cool. But it also added a layer of work for all of those who were participating. They had to go extra steps. They may have had to get somebody to record them or help them. It took extra steps, but they were willing to do that. And that's super cool. So you can see God working through them. And it was a joy to help everyone do that and teach them little tricks and help um, two of our teens build their sermon with Pastor Ryan and help them craft what God was speaking to them to share to you. And you'll get to see that in just a little bit. So as I read some announcements, make sure that you have liked this page so you can find us again and you'll know when we go live or there's new content or we do a Facebook premiere. If you're watching this on YouTube later, be sure to hit subscribe and hit that bell. And that way you'll know when we have new content out and help you on your faith journey. So, and if you're watching this later, type replay in the comments. Let us know that you came back, that you caught this later. It helps us a lot. First announcement. We have some residents in our area who we would normally be sending DVDs to them, but because they can't gather in a common room, most of them do not have TVs in their room. And I realized, well, I could give them a CD and they could listen to it. And some don't have CD players. Well, I called over to the activity department at this nursing home and they said, yeah, sure, we'll take them. We just need some players. And I said, I get you some. So I'm reaching out to you guys. If you would like to help in getting CD players to a couple residents at the nursing home. Comment here, send us a message, call the church, reach out. Um, we can use your help. And Pastor Ryan and I had a lengthy discussion over what you call a stereo with a CD player on it. He says it's a boom box. I said, that shows how old you are. I mean, I had a boom box. Little, I'm 37. I had a boombox thing, it was huge. You know, I had these giant speakers. That's a boombox to me, not this little stereo with speakers and a CD player and probably a radio and maybe a tape deck. That's not a boombox. So, if you agree with me, who's right, or you agree with Pastor Ryan, put that in the comments. He'll love it because he's wrong too. All right. The other thing is, soon in front of the church you will see some face masks. God working again through those in our community and through, you know, just to show you that God can work through you too. So May has made a lot of face masks. And starting May 1st, when you go out and you're not able to socially distance, you need a mask. Well, you may not have sewing skills. You may not have the time because some of us have a lot of time and some of us don't. Um, that we're working more than ever and harder because things are just difficult and they're different. Um, and you need a mask. So soon outside of our church, First United Methodist Church, that brick building on Church and Peruse Street, there will be masks. And we ask one per person so that we can make sure that we're reaching as many as we can to help that way. Thank you again, Crystal, for your hard work. And thank you for all of you who have made masks, who are doing what they can do to help to remind people 
that we're not alone and we are connected. Huge right now as we're distancing. I can feel pretty lonely. So I'm glad that you're here and we're all worshiping together. What you're going to see next is a slideshow, a short video of some of our youth who are part of the church, who are part of the youth group, Sunday school, different things that we do and you get to meet them a little bit. And some you'll get to meet a little bit later. So enjoy this video. shout out to Maggie for helping make that slideshow. That was a huge help. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. Send her pictures and she's like, ah! <laughs> and it was great. Now what you're going to see is an announcement from Reed Orwig about another pretty cool thing that the youth have done. And uh, I was really, really glad to be a part of it. So watch this. Short. On March 13th and 14th of this year, Kelly Davis and our youth group, with the help of many volunteers, held the Promise Sale here at FUMC. The Promise Sale helps young people be able to afford the cost of attending prom, and so it makes sense that we would share some of our proceeds with another local organization committed to meeting the needs of youth in our community. The youth group wants to share that as a group, we felt that so many donated generously to the Promise Sale that we felt led to give to Buddy Bags. The Buddy Bag program takes care of many school-aged children in our area, and during a time like this, it is a necessary service to the community. The youth group donated $250 of the proceeds that we earned to help our peers in Princeton and Bureau Valley. We are thankful to be able to give a portion of our proceeds to such a special organization. We also thank the congregation for their support from helping us carry up dresses to manning the dressing rooms, to cleaning up after, to sending customers our way. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Reed. Now, you ready to worship? Let's go. Join Sophia in the focusing prayer as we focus in to worship together. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sophia Ryshinsky and I am going to lead you in the focusing prayer. We give you thanks, holy God, for promises kept and blessings provided. Your love shows us a glimpse of heaven we can only dimly perceive right now. Your spirit reaches out to us with strength and power beyond our understanding. In these moments, help us to remember who you are and that we need you in our lives. Teach us how to live as you intend. Through Christ our Savior, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Sophia. Now, let's go over to Philip. Philip is going to lead us in the call to worship. And a call to worship, if you're not familiar with that, is a read and response. So normally the liturgist um, reading would read a sentence. And then the congregation, all of you would read it. Well, it's kind of hard to do right now. So Philip is going to read all of them. And the black words... The bolded words are what you read. So read them out loud. Come into worship. Please join me in our call to worship. Come awake. The light of God is breaking through the darkness. We bless the light, an unyielding sign of hope in times of trouble. Do not fear. The love of Christ opens up a space of relief and peace for us. We bless this time 
we spend together, a sanctuary of rest wherever we may be. Delight in the gifts of the Spirit, who sets a table of welcome for all. Surely goodness and mercy have found us here, located in the God of abounding love. Thank you, Philip. Now, our opening hymn is called Sanctuary. And the youth chose this one. They pretty much chose everything we did in here with some guidance. Sanctuary is a popular hymn that is sung at camps. And they were like, oh, we have to do Sanctuary. And I'm like, okay, sounds lovely. It is a very cool song. Colin and Alex Kness are going to lead you. Please sing along. Kness, and this is my brother, Al. And we are going to play our first song, Sanctuary, a traditional uh, hymn. guys for that such good talent now jack is going to lead us in the unison prayer of confession we're going to read the first part that you see in black and then we're going to have a moment of silence and then you're jack's going to pray with us time for is the unison prayer of confession god of wholeness we have become fragmented we build up walls around our hearts and hide ourselves from others we even hide from ourselves. The pain of dealing with all we bear can be too much. But God, you have called us to be your people, a people who lean on you and others. You have called us to be the people of the new commandment, which is to, to love one another. We know we cannot go it alone. So loving Lord, guide our hands to reach across barriers so we might participate in the healings of the world. Here now our individual individual sins of we confessed to you in the silence. Assurance of forgiveness. God meets us where we are in order to turn our lives around. God raised Jesus from death to assure us of new life. God's promises are for us and for our children. Know that we are forgiven and freed. Praise be to God. Amen. Thank you, Jack. Some special music. Please enjoy Courtney's singing of Danny Boy. The pipes are calling From glen to glen And down the mountainside The summer's gone And all the roses falling It's you, it's you Must go and I must buy But come ye back I'll be here. 
to be leading us in our children's message. Any children come close, come close. This message is for you and adults don't turn your ears off because there is some truth bombs that you find in even the children's message. Hello and good morning everyone. My name is Elizabeth Orwick for those of you who don't know me and I will be doing your children's sermon today. So before I get started, I'd like you all to meet my friend, Bindi. This is my cat. She's four years old and she's also my best friend. Now, what do you think Bindi is afraid of? Now, if she could talk, she'd probably tell you she's afraid of my dogs and my brothers. I'm also afraid of spiders. Pastor Ryan's afraid of clowns. We all are definitely afraid of something. Now, I have something I'd like to share with you from the Bible, Psalm 121 verses 3 and 4. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Now, think of something you might be afraid of. How do you feel when you think about that? Do you feel afraid? maybe a little nervous, a little uneasy. Now, I want to tell you that God is always protecting you and guarding you, even when you experience those feelings sometimes. For example, imagine a dark, stormy night. Thunder crashes, lightning streaks the sky, sheets of rain are pouring on your roof. How would this night make you feel? Maybe a little uneasy, not really wanting to go to bed. Well, God is guarding you even during this night or all nights. Also, maybe like when you feel alone, you get lost in a store or the mall. Maybe you feel left out by your friends. God is always protecting you and guarding you when you feel afraid or when you experience any of these feelings. Now, I'd like to close this out in prayer. If we could all bow our heads. Dear God, thank you for guiding us always. We sure are grateful that you will not let us be defeated and you will preserve our lives. Thank you for keeping us safe. Amen. Thank you, guys. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Elizabeth and Bindi. Well done. Beautiful message. And it is very, very well um, needed right now. Now, Ira is going to lead us in our first scripture reading. Deuteronomy 31 verses 1 through 8. When Moses had finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, I am now 120 years old. I am no longer able to get about. And the Lord has told me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over before you. He will destroy these nations before you, and you shall d dispossess them. Joshua also will cross over before you, as the Lord promised. The Lord will do to them as he has done to Shion and Oji, the kings of all Amorites and to their land, when he destroyed them. The Lord will give them over to you and you shall deal with them in full accord with the command that I have given to you. Be strong and bold. 
Have no fear or dread of them, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and bold, for you are the one who will go with his this people into the land that the Lord has sworn to their ancestors to give them. And you, you will put them in possession of it. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will, not, he will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Thank you, Era. Now Maggie is going to deliver her message that God has given her to give to us. Hey guys, I'm Maggie Davis. I am 16 years old and I will be giving a message today. Now, trying to come up with a message to give to so many people was hard, but here we go. Fear. What is it? Dictionary.com defines fear as a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, evil, pain, etc. Whether the threat is real or imagined, it is a feeling or condition of being afraid. Now, people of all ages are afraid, whether of the believed monster in their closet or something like the virus going around today. I believe in my life so far, I have conquered many fears. Fear of the dark when I was little, fear of being in front of large crowds as I grew older, fear of what will happen if I did this, tried that, jumped there. But when I look back on these fears, I honestly can't explain or tell someone how I got over them. It's not like I instantly started doing it and got rid of the fear. I, like many others, probably had to do it afraid and keep doing it with fear and anxiety in the pit of my stomach until I just didn't worry anymore. Now, I've been dancing since before I can remember. I have always gotten up on stage with my friends and tried to be a star, but when I tried to perform in front of judges for the first time at Pond's Camp with girls I had only met a couple days before, I was quite honestly terrified. I had really only performed with people I knew loved and supported me in places I'd been a hundred times before. I really never had to deal with stage fright like that. I was afraid of what the judges would think of me and how it would affect my team. But I went out there and I performed and it was scary, but I got through it. And now each time I do it, it's easier. You might not be able to push away fear instantly. You might have to take on the world and everyday life while being afraid. If you think of it, Fear could be like yellow caution tape, keeping you safe and telling you what not to do, helps you be prepared and fear can aid in making decisions. But when there's too much fear or yellow caution tape, it can stop you from going places and functioning. We can relate that to how life is right now. We are being told to shelter in place. So basically, for the fear of spreading the coronavirus and getting yourself sick or others, you should stay home. For the fear. Now, I'm no expert, and from what I hear in the news, it sounds like we are helping, but the fact of the matter is, it is a time of fear. It is a time for fear of your health, for the love, your loved one's health, fear of the mental, physical, economic health of the country, and even the world. It is a time for fear, and there's no easy way to change that. So... You must trust in God 
and live through this fear. It says in Deuteronomy 31 8, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not be afraid or be dismayed. Did you hear that in there? He will not leave you. God will be by our sides. And it says, do not fear. The scripture read before this talked about being courageous because God will go with you so you have no reason to fear. That is a lot easier said than done. The key to live through fear is knowing God has his arms wrapped around you. He is protecting you and has a plan for you. We are very limited on how much living we can do right now, but we are not limited in spending time with those in our households, sending prayers and positive messages out into our communities, and calling family or friends that we haven't talked to in a while. We cannot allow fear to stop us from enjoying the extra free time we have right now. And by working through fear and sharing positive messages, you could help others not be afraid and inspire more people. And almost more importantly, we can't allow fear to stop us from living after all of this chaos is over. If there's one thing you get from this coronavirus and from me speaking today, I want it to be that life is precious and never stop doing what you love and enjoy in life. Do not let fear hold you back for the Lord will guide and protect you. You can walk through fear in his arms. Now I would like to pray. Lord, guide these people, light their paths so that they might know a way. Be in their hearts so that they can have courage to walk through fear and wrap your arms around them and keep them safe. And Lord, show them how to share me this message with other people and help others to handle fear and live in your love. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a hand and giving me the strength to share my message with them. While even though being afraid, I did it, and I have to thank you for that, Lord. You are almighty, and we worship you today and always, for you will protect us and can guide us through even the worst times. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for allowing me to share my message with you guys today, and I hope you are all staying healthy and safe. Thanks, Maggie. It was well done. It was a very, very powerful message. Now, Trent is going to read for us our second scripture. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 through 20. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts, what I desire is that more be credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied. Now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, they are a fragrant offering, 
an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Trent. Now, Drew Knipper is going to read his message that God has given him. Hello, everyone. My name is Drew Knipper. I am a sophomore at PHS, and I will be reading my sermon I wrote for you. I wanted to start off by asking you a question. If I were to go to the middle of this Harry Potter book and start reading without knowing what happened beforehand, would I know what in the world was going on? No, I would need context so I could understand why a car is stuck in a tree and how it got up there. This applies to the Bible as well. If I had never read the Bible before and opened up to the middle of Revelation, I probably would be really scared and not want to read anymore. The only difference between Harry Potter and the Bible is we must believe in the Bible and understand it so we can live a Christian life on earth and an eternal life in heaven. Harry Potter is something that will not affect where we spend our eternities. Now I have another question. Have any of you heard the verse, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me? This is a common verse from Philippians that you will see on pillows and other decorations in people's houses. But did you know this is one of the most misused and abused texts in all of scripture? One common thing people do when reading the Bible is take verses out of context. Most of the time when people take verses out of context, it is because they have not taken time to read the rest of the letter. Sometimes people take verses out of context because they treat the Bible like a lucky rabbit's foot rather than God's inerrant holy word. In other times, people take verses out of context because they have a low view of the Bible and see it as just a bunch of wise sayings thrown together instead of inspired by God. Without context, this verse is meaningless. God does not promise or say we can do anything we want through Christ. He actually says we'll suffer for following him. So how do you find context? Just to put out the definition, context is the circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement, or idea, and in terms of which it can be fully understood and assessed. Biblical context is what comes before and after verse level, paragraph level, entire letter level, and whole Bible level. So what do we need to know for this verse? First, we need to read the surrounding verses before and after. Then we need to find out who the writer was and who the writer was writing to. All scripture is applicable to us, meaning no matter how what you read, Leviticus, Isaiah, or Galatians, it is written by God through men to change us. The key is understanding how to apply the Old Testament to us, the church. There are specific commands that belong only to Israel, the ceremonial laws, etc. However, even these teach us principles about who God is and what he demands from his people. So we must ask, who is the audience? If the audience is someone else and not the church, example, for example, you and me, then we have to find the principle in the text instead of directly applying the scripture that belongs to someone else and not to us. In other words, the Bible isn't about us. It's about God. And God deals with different people sometimes in different ways. But we can, all, we can always glory and worship him and for what he has done, even for others like Israel, Adam and Eve, and Noah. We can find out that Philippians is written by the Apostle Paul, and Paul was writing to the Christians at the Church of Philippi. Another key thing we need to know is this book is also meant for Christian believers today, and it directly applies to how we should live our lives, because we too are members of the church. We next need to look at different translations. Sometimes different translations of the Bible tell us different things. Different translations help us to see what's happening in the original language of the Bible, Greek. 
Different translations help us with words and grammar. With words, they help us, they help to see when, wait, what words could be translated as in English. With grammar, we can see the word order possibilities. For example, when I started talking to you, I said, I can do all things through Christ. I took this from an English Standard Version, Bible. The scripture read today was out of a new international version, vers bleh, version Bible. The new international version Bible says, I can do all this through him. The word this is very important. It is specifically telling us he can do all the things he stated in the verses before this verse through Christ. So now that we know all this key information, we need to apply the context. Paul is teaching us that in times of trouble and in times of joy, when God is telling us to do something, he has given us the strength to obey him and fulfill what he has called us to do with satisfaction. That's a lot different than God saying we can do anything through Jesus. Unfortunately, this is not the only verse taken out of context. Verses from both the Old Testament and the New Testament are taken out of context. For example, there's a passage that has been circulating on social media lately. As it has good intentions, trying to get people to turn to God, it was unfortunately taken out of context. Second Chronicles 7, 13 through 14 says, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. People have been taking this for exactly what it says, but it was not meant for us. The context tells us God was speaking to Solomon about the nation of Israel as his covenant nation after Solomon built the temple. The church is not under the old covenant as Israel was. Israel was commanded to obey the Mosaic law, and as they did, they would experience incredible blessing and be a light to the world. If they didn't, they would experience the curses of Deuteronomy 28. They were before the cross, we are after the cross, under the new covenant. Israel's blessings are drawn from the promised land. The church's blessings are found in Christ in the heavens. So this passage is not speaking directly to us. At the end of Deuteronomy, the blessings and curses are proclaimed for the nation of Israel for following the covenant or failure to follow it. The famine and pestilence, losses in war, captivity, etc. are part of that covenant. So if the nation of Israel was not following that, following that covenant, God would bring these things upon them. But if they repented and turned back to the Lord, he would relent from those things and bring about the blessings to their land instead. This is about temporal judgment on the nation of Israel for failure to keep the covenant. Context is extremely important. We need to understand the Bible to its fullest potential, not just to how we want it to be, but how God intended it to be. It's not up to us. Fortunately, everything we need to know is there. All we have to do is read. Thank you both. That was awesome. Such good lessons in there in so many ways that God is speaking um, through you. And we appreciate you sharing that message with us. We know it is uh, be challenging and you rose to it. Now, our next song is, and I'm, you're invited to sing this song. It's called You Say. So this uh, next song that we're going to be playing is the very popular Christian contemporary song, You Say, by Lauren Daigle. And I, Colin, will be playing the bass, Al will be playing keyboard for us, and Courtney Atkinson will be singing.
favorite songs ever. Love them. Now Pastor Ryan is going to share with her joys and concerns. And if you have any, please put them in the comments, message us, call. Let us be in prayer with you because we know we are all going through things in our in different ways. You don't have to go through those things alone. Good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Ryan, and I'm so glad that you are able to join us today for Youth Sunday. Aren't the youth doing a great job? And we have a very talented bunch in our in our church. Uh, so I'm here to be able to share with you some of the joys and concerns that we have today. We actually didn't have that many come in this week, so we're grateful that people seem to be doing well, and we pray that that will continue in terms of, of people's health. But these are the ones that I would like to share with you. We want to have continued prayers for Jody Zelenek's sister, Susan. She was able to get out of the hospital, but she is still dealing a lot with her, her coronavirus situation. Um, the others in her family are getting better too, but there's still a lot, of, a lot of worry with that situation. So prayers for Susan and her family. We celebrate that Josh Bush was able to get back to work after dealing with his pneumonia for a few weeks. So congrats to you, Josh, and hope you're enjoying being back at work. We continue to pray for Agnes Dunn as she awaits results from tests. And we also continue to pray for all the healthcare workers and the victims of, of the coronavirus and all, and all the other difficulties um, health-wise that people are experiencing during this time. It's not just the coronavirus. People still have other diseases and issues as well. We continue to pray for our children and youth who are going a little stir-crazy at this point without sports going on and without being able to be at friends and the regular routine of school. I'm sure it was fun to begin with, but now it's a little more difficult. So we continue to pray for the kids, the youth, and the parents as well. We also pray for all those who are dealing with the fact that there's just all kinds of emotions going on right now. The weather's getting better, so we want to be outside. We want to have fun things to do, but we know we need to shelter at home. So I'm sure there's a little bit more depression and other, other just mixed emotions that are going on right now. So pray that we can continue to stay as positive we, as we can throughout this, especially during this month of May where we are being asked to continue doing the same thing as we have been doing so that we can all stay safe. And I would say that it is a joy to be able to celebrate the sunshine and the warm temperatures that we've been able to have over the last week or so. And we pray that that continues in the future. Just gives us a little more energy and a spring to our step when we're able to be outside and, and see that wonderful sunshine out there. So please continue to send us your joys and concerns during the week. We will definitely lift them up and we will continue praying and get, asking God's blessing to be upon us as we go through this time. May God continue to be with you and enjoy the rest of the worship service. And now Emma is going to lead us in prayer and she's going to follow it with the Lord's Prayer. Please say that with us so that we can all be praying together as we watch this and hear this prayer. Gracious Redeemer, we give you thanks and praise for the gift of your word and for its power to encourage, comfort, convict, and transform. We hear this word and are keenly aware of our inability to follow it completely. We need a merciful Savior who sees us as we are, not as we want others and you to think we are. And you gave him to us in the person of your Son, Jesus. We thank that he understands our weaknesses, sympathizes with the brokenness of our human condition, and reaches out to us in love, compassion, and grace. It is because of Jesus' life with, lived without sin and his work on the cross that we come to you with confidence knowing that you welcome us home and hear us with the tenderness and concern. Lord, hear our joys and concerns lifted up to you this day. We trust you with them, knowing that you care for each person and situation with a love we can't even fathom. Allow it to leave them at your feet, knowing that they are well heard and acted upon. Hear us now as we pray the prayer, your son, our Savior, taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen, Emma. And now Marissa is going to lead us in the offering prayer. We know that uh, offering and giving looks a little different right now. And it is amazing how generous and committed you all are to continuing the ministries of this church, the ministries that we've been called to do. And uh, it's definitely a blessing. Please, please note, we do have PayPal. See the link in the comments above. And if that's a way that's comfortable for you to give, we appreciate it. Marissa? For all the saints, O oh God, who have guided our lives, for all the ways you've saved us from ourselves, for all the times your love has been poured out on us, we give you thanks. With what we give you this day, please receive this example of our devotion with joy and gratitude. Amen. And now we're going to sing our doxology, one of our... Thank you, Pastor Ryan and Charlie, for that beautiful song. That now for our closing hymn, it is our. It's one of our favorites. When uh, our office admin has a hymnal, and when we sing a song, she writes the date in the upper corner, <laughs> and this one's full because <laughs> it's just one that speaks to so many of us, and it's very memorable melody and it's got a powerful message so again let's sing here i am lord Of night. 
we've come to the end of our service. Remember all of this and remember the ways that God is speaking to you. And we will close out as Trent us off with a benediction. Be blessed. And thank you for being here. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.